Hey folks, John with RaisingQuail.net again. Say, so I thought I'd post a quick uh, video follow-up to my blog post about my brooder setup. Uh, what I use is a 55-gallon, I'm sorry, 50-gallon Rubbermaid bin like this. Um, these are great because they're they're fairly inexpensive. You know, you buy one, you could use it probably for the rest of your life. And uh, <clears throat> when they get all dirty, mucked up. You just take them outside, hose them, hose them off with the garden hose, and uh, they're ready to go. Use them over and over again. Uh, what I line my brooders with is just good old-fashioned paper towels. Uh, these are great. They're super absorbent. Uh, they're super cheap. And when they get all mucked up, I roll them up, throw them out into the compost pile. Uh, what you don't want to use is something like newspaper because uh, newspaper is real, real slippery and these birds when they come out they're super uncoordinated uh, unsteady on their feet you want to give them every advantage to learn how to walk and if they're on something slippery like newspaper they uh, you know they can develop leg problems foot problems and you want to avoid that as much as you can so uh, I found that paper towels works perfect uh, next is heat <clears throat> You know, some people think that, you know, brooders are some mysterious, uh, complex machine. Uh, not really. All it is is, is a bird cage with a heat source to keep the uh, chicks warm. So what I use is a standard heat lamp with a 250-watt bulb. Red bulb is what I use. Uh, some folks use clear bulbs. Your, it's your choice. I, uh, these red bulbs have been working great for me, so I'm going to stick with them. Now, if you do use an extension cord, um, you know, ensure that the extension cord is rated for the wattage of your bulb so that you don't, uh, you know, cause any fires or, or trip breakers or anything like that. Um, I do got a, a real cheap $4, you know, uh, thermometer from Home Depot in there just to keep tabs on the temperature. But it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, this isn't like incubation where, you know, temperature is critical. You want to start out at roughly 99 degrees, and um, a good idea to do is to put your heat lamp on one side of the brooder like this, so that, you know, if the uh, chicks get hot, they can just run over to this side of the brooder. If they're getting a little cool, they can run over underneath the light. Gives them a little room to move, self-regulate, and uh, that works perfectly. Now. About once a week or so, you want to raise this up a foot or so to reduce the temperature slowly over three, four, five weeks uh, until they're fully feathered out and they'll uh, and they're ready for their grow up pens. Uh, again, the temperature the temperature doesn't have to be perfect. It's just you just want to slowly wean them off the heat and let them feather out. Now for feed. Uh, you know the entire lives of these birds they eat the same feed it's it's uh, game bird show bird crumbles uh, when they are meh, you know from the day they hatch until I don't know three four five days I do grind up the crumbles so that it's more of like a powder um, it's just easier for them it's probably really not necessary there's plenty of small bits in the uh, and it crumbles out of the bag but um, I grind it up make it a little easier for them and for the first three four five days I just pour a pile of, of the feed right right on the right on the floor of the, of the brooder they'll kick it around play around splash in it and have fun and but uh, they do eat it you know I'll, uh, I'll pour a pile out there go to work come back and most of it's gone so they uh, they might play in it but they will eat it so <clears throat> but then after that after three four five days just to use a standard chick feeder like this. I pour the crumbles right in, and uh, they figure it out quick. So, next is uh, water, and this is very, very important for uh, newly hatched chicks. I just use a standard, you know, chick water like this. Uh, what you need to do is you need to put marbles or pebbles, uh, something non-toxic, in in the tray so that the chicks will not fall in and drown. I've had this actually happen and it sucks. So um, I had these marbles from, I don't know, some ornamental plant or something we had just laying around the house and that's what I use. So 
Well, what the birds do is that they just stick their beaks in between the marbles and get to the water just fine. But if they hop up on there, uh, they're not going to fall in and drown. So uh, you want to, you definitely want to use something like that for the first week or so until uh, the birds are steady on their feet. And you, and you'll figure it out. You'll you'll watch them walk around and you'll be like, okay, these guys are now steady on their feet and uh, they know what they're doing. So. Uh, they won't fall in and drown. They'll they'll, they'll be able to get out. So uh, that is very very important. Now I'm going to cut this off because these guys, if you notice, are all bunched up, wondering where the hell their heat lamp is. <laughs> They're two and a half weeks old, and I moved them out to the what I call my secondary brooder, but um, it's a, a plywood box out here in the birdhouse. I do put the heat lamp on them. And they're on straw, and uh, they're looking a little chilly because they're all in a big ball. So, anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and uh, I will answer every one of them. Thanks for watching.